Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Welcome to today's edition of Helping Seniors Television from the Helping Seniors Network. Whether you are caring for a senior, are a senior, or just plan to be one, we hope you'll enjoy today's program. Today's Helping Seniors TV segment takes a look at joint replacement and program host Carrie Fink talks with Health First Joint Replacement Surgeon, Dr. Scott Miller. Let's listen in. I'm Carrie Fink with Helping Seniors TV, and it is a pleasure to be here today with Helping Seniors TV. We're live and on location at the Mega Senior Expo, which is taking place uh, today in the uh, Melbourne Auditorium. And this is a thing that happens several times a year uh, throughout Brevard County where there is a senior expo and health fair and literally hundreds and hundreds of people come by. There's something like 70 plus different uh, vendors and information tables here. So people can come by and get a lot of information in one place. And uh, we have the privilege of uh, snagging a few people who are, who are making appearances here. And we're really privileged to have with us Dr. Scott Miller, who is a... Uh, orthopedic surgeon working with Health First, and thanks for taking time out of your schedule to, to be with us today. That's no problem. I actually, I really enjoy coming out to places like this. It gives me the opportunity to, uh, to get out in the community and to see things not just in my office, which is smaller. <laughs> well, I, they gave me some background on you. You said you're originally from Tampa, Florida. So tell us a little bit about how you came over to our side of Florida, which we think is a good side of Florida. Actually, I, I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. Go Cubs. Cubs finally won the World Series. Um, but Chicago is cold. Yes. And uh, from Chicago, I moved to Milwaukee for medical school and then Long Island to do fellowship training. Well, really residency first. And then Tampa was fellowship training. So I did my fellowship for a year in Tampa. And my wife liked it warmer than <laughs> uh, it was in Chicago. So we ended up moving down uh, across the state here because I like the ocean more than the bay. And there was a great opportunity to work in the community here. Yeah, and I was going to say, there was a note here they said about wife and baby, and I was going to just yeah. ask you. Yes, it's, it's weird to think, but I think I've known my wife now for almost 15 years, and uh, we now have been married for eight-ish, and uh, we have an 18-month-old daughter, Delilah. Well, congratulations. That's got to be an important. That's got to be an important part of your life. It is. You know, I like to. Uh, I like to make sure that every night I get home in time to see her before she goes to bed. So that's my goal every day. I start to get home in time. That has to be a challenge because I. It says here also too. Not only are you an orthopedic surgeon, but you're fellowship trained in total joint. And I want to steer toward that. But before we steer toward that, I just want to ask you. So that's tough because as many patients as you're helping and and working with and get home every night that's uh that's yes uh, yes because i have a hard time saying no or stopping so <laughs> my schedule tends to get bigger as the day goes and i just and you know you can see i like to talk to patients we uh there's a lot to be said when you're talking to a surgeon and i guess that's part of this is making sure that you get out and see the doctor and know who you're getting because once we establish a relationship we're together for a long time. Right. So you got to make sure that we feel comfortable with each other. And that's why it's important that we spend the time to talk. So in spite of all that, I still do try to get home <laughs> every night. Well, and that's good. And I think that's important. But it's also important. Uh, could you explain a little bit what uh, fellowship training in, in total joint means? Because I know when you're a typical consumer and you just know things aren't feeling right and you're trying to figure out I gotta do something and how do you even begin to know what the right things to do are then? Sure, the, the thing about becoming a surgeon, it's a long process. So from start to finish, it's about 13 years when you decide that you wanna be an orthopedic surgeon. But then I, I wanted to subspecialize specifically in doing hip and knee replacements. And then the redos, the people that have them in already that aren't very happy with them. So I spent an extra year, that was my year in Tampa. And that time is spent doing only hip and knees. So my practice is 95% hip and 
hip and knee pain and management with joint replacements. And I think from a consumer standpoint, it's important that you have somebody, number one, that you're comfortable with, but number two, that's comfortable with what you need to have done. So as a fellowship trained surgeon, I feel I'm uniquely prepared to uh, address joint problems in the patient population. And you know, by doing fellowship training, it allows me to be uh, up to date on new techniques and new opportunities. And uh, I think that's something in the community that's, that's really uh, enjoyed, actually. Yeah, so a question would be, if you're watching this television show, and just a little background for helping seniors, you know, we are a not-for-profit organization, and our mission is to get information into seniors' hands. And as you know, here in Brevard County, literally half of our people in Brevard County, by AARP definition, are seniors, meaning they're 50-plus, and one out of four is actually 65-plus. So Joe Steckler, who's our president and founder of the organization, he's a retired Navy captain. He uh, did a lot of work establishing the uh, Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation and getting all that going. Couldn't stand to be retired. He's 83 years old now, but six years ago he said, Kerry, I'm starting up a group called Helping Seniors of Brevard, and I just want it to be a source of getting information in people's hands because sometimes dementia and Alzheimer's isn't the only issue that seniors face. So one of the questions is we try to do television, radio, a lot of things that bring information to people all throughout Brevard County. So when you said the word pain, and when you were talking about knee and, and hip replacement, I thought about this because we archive our television programs on a Helping Seniors YouTube channel, and one of the most frequently searched out topics is pain. And so I want to say, like, how would somebody understand when it's time to give your office a call? Like, what's going on that would cause them to say, I need to take a step in the right direction about this? So that's actually a, a great question. And uh, as an aside, I think that the work that you do with all of the things that this community group does and all of the, I mean, it's incredible Thank you. To, to just be able to provide. Uh, I see so many people that get lost in the shuffle and I see them they end up in my office and they've been searching for the way there and it's a six seven month process for some of them so I think anything that you can do and provide and have as an opportunity is, is an excellent thing but jumping back to pain so what I like to tell people is when pain becomes the primary influence on what you do in a given day when it's that bad you need to start thinking about seeing somebody. And that can be pain in your hip, it could be pain in your knee, it could be pain in your back. It could be any number of things. But when you've started to dictate the terms of your day, like, oh, I golfed yesterday, we're going to have to take the next two or three days off so I can recover. Or I want to go to Disney this week, so we're going to shut it down before and after. When you've, when you've made that many accommodations, there's got to be a better way. And so those are the people that I try to... I'd love to get them in sooner so they don't make so many changes to their life. You know, being a senior now is so much different than it was 20 years ago. At 20 years past, you say, oh, 65, it's time to sit on the couch. We're done. Let's chill out. Now I've got 85-year-olds complaining yes. that their handicap is going up when they golf yeah. or their doubles game is getting worse <laughs> in tennis. They're more active than I am. Right. And so I'm just trying to... I'm trying to insert myself in their life to keep them where they need to be. You know, it is a funny statistic because I think it's still true that um, 85 plus is the fastest growing demographic by percentage. And it's simply because, as you said, aging is, is a totally different dynamic than it was, you know, tw it seems to me, 20 or 40 years ago because the advances and things. And I would assume that things that you're able to do now are, are really the product of so much learning and as time goes by it gets better and, and easier for people to access care that's going to make a difference in their life. Not only that, the way we deliver care is improving as well. I mean you go back again, I use the term 20 loosely, but you go back and you get a joint replaced, a hip or a knee, you're in the hospital for a week, rehab for a month, you're still trying to figure out what to do. Uh, we're so much more aggressive now because patients can handle that that attitude. They have the attitude of get me up and let me move. Right. We get patients in the hospital and they send them home the next day with a hip replacement. They wow. get out of the hospital wow. in two days with a knee replacement, wow. sometimes sooner. It's a very different world. I think people are uh, are able to do better because of how we do things. Sure. How do you? So how would a person watching this television show? Um, 
sort of like look at their situation and say, it might be time to give uh, Dr. Miller a call? Yeah. So, like I said, we get ourselves into a position where pain is a definer, but also curiosity, right? You know, I, I just don't feel right anymore. You see your primary doctor. A lot of patients can get a lot of information out of their primary care physician, and certainly accessing the tools and things that you have available to them. Uh, you know, we talk about joint replacement. Where is my hip? Well, my hip's kind of groin pain. It's not really out on the side. My knee can hurt anywhere, and the knee's pretty easy to pick out. Uh, but you get connected with your primary doctor. An x-ray can be taken, and all of a sudden, hey, look, you got arthritis. Now let's get you into the into the machine that, that gets you back into your functional state. Wow, so that's actually a diagnosis or whatever that might might lead to your office then. Absolutely. I think anybody that's told that they have arthritis, so their hip and knee, is probably somebody that should be coming and seeing me. Right, and that's like the first step. They would come to your office, sort of get evaluated. Yeah. You would put, put them on the right path as far as trying to decide, like, this is where you're at in this stage and such sure. like that. Sure. I mean, it would be lovely if every patient I saw had to be operated on, sure. hip or knee replacement, but that's not how it works. You've got people that are in all different portions of the disease mm -hmm. process, early, late, some more painful than others. I am I'm there as a intermittent guide and leading you up to a hip or a knee replacement. And I would assume, I don't know for sure, but I would assume it probably makes sense to get in there early and sort of get a get a sense for where you are on that scale. Absolutely. Studies have shown us that those that wait so long, mm -hmm. they wait too long and their results aren't as good as they could be. They let themselves get too brought down by the process. So, um, you know, historically we told people, Wait till you're as old as you can manage. Wait as long as you can. But that's not, I don't think, so acceptable anymore. Now it's actually going the other direction if people are, like, anxious to get back out on the golf course yes. and such, right? Exactly. <laughs> it. Now it's now it's what do we need to do to get you there, not how right. long can we wait until you get back. No, I follow that. Well, let's talk about this. If somebody was thinking, like, well, this is interesting information, I should get in touch and at least explore this farther, what would you recommend? How, what would be a good step for them to take? So uh, my office is a good number to call, and I bet you we can put that up right across the I bottom of the so. screen. I think if I do that, maybe we can put it right there. I think they can manage we'll that. We'll try that. <laughs> we have a good uh, team. <laughs> but we will uh, – call the office you will call the office we'll set you up with an appointment and we'll go through the process there'll be some paperwork to fill out I'll sit down with you I'll answer your questions you know we have a lot of interesting and exciting techniques and we can bring that all in the front you know the anterior hip replacement is big on everybody's mind mm -hmm. that's that muscle sparing approach that we mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. and that's what's getting our patients out so fast yes. um, we're happy with our knee we're trying to use the robot more we got a lot of good things coming in this Brevard area yeah well I hope in coming shows we're about out of time for right now but I hope in a coming show we could sit down and really even explore some of those things because I would imagine it's fascinating if we could get into some of the nuances about just how far all of this has moved forward over the years. I think that'd be great. Yeah, you're talking like robotic and things like that. I mean, the advances are amazing. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Miller, for taking the time to uh, pop by and talk to us here at the Mega Senior Expo. It's really been a pleasure having you, and thank you for all the good work you're doing for helping seniors. Oh, and you as well. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Take care. Now more of Helping Seniors Television from the Helping Seniors Network, informing, educating, and connecting. Today, Rachel McLean guests with program host Carrie Fink and they talk about advances in senior living. This TV program was filmed on location at the Senior Megafest at the Melbourne Auditorium. I'm Kerry Fink, and it is a pleasure to be here today on Helping Seniors TV. We're actually on location at the Mega Senior Fest, which is going on at the Melbourne Auditorium. It is a huge, huge senior expo and health fair that takes place a couple of times a year here in Melbourne, Florida. We happen to be right now, March of 2017, at a very well-attended event. Lots of people here. I think there's 70-plus vendors here. And it is a great place to stop in and get good information. They've got everything going on 
from music, entertainment. They're going to have a senior fashion show. There's cats here from the uh, Central Brevard Humane Society. So there's something for everybody here, including really good information and really good people with good services that help seniors. And so speaking of that, I have the pleasure of sitting here with Rachel McLean, who's the Community Relations Director with a luxurious place called Riverview Senior Living Resort. And welcome to, uh, welcome to our makeshift set today. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And a little background, uh, you guys have really been partners in helping, helping seniors actually since even before the building doors opened. And we were just down on the beautiful uh, grounds of Riverview Senior Living Resort filming TV. Our president and founder, Joe Steckler, as you know, who usually is hosting our TV segments, uh, he just did a series of programs there on location, beautiful spot. If you haven't been by there, you owe it to yourself. But before we talk really about that, I want to just ask you about you and your journey in how you came to be in senior services and then particularly at Riverview. Um, well, I, originally I'm from Washington, D.C., and um, I find myself blessed in the fact that I um, was part of the military for a few years and enjoyed my time in the military. And as I was exiting, uh, there was a military retirement community that was opening just down the street. So. I thought what a wonderful blend. I had um, aging parents and grandparents myself that I was taking care of and um, so I, I stepped into that environment to learn more about what they needed on a regular basis and still blend my passion for the military and um, after about a decade of spending my time there I realized that uh, not only did I have a passion for the military and for my own family, but I had a passion for seniors as well. So I have uh, maintained that passion and stayed in this industry since then and I absolutely love it. And you know you have the uh, uh, you have a great role in what you do with Riverview, which is actually a very new facility to the area, but it really is kind of groundbreaking in many ways. Tell us a little bit about Riverview and how you came to be there and the work that you do with that with that whole uh, organization, which is growing fast, right? Absolutely. Um, Riverview opened in July, um, and. We have been fortunate enough that we are um, over halfway full at wow. this point. Uh, we offer independent living, assisted living, and a secured memory care. Uh, we're a little unique because we are um, on the river, on the Indian River, directly on a peninsula. So we are surrounded by water on three sides um, with a beautiful environment to watch the dolphins play all day. So what a serene environment to have care and luxury. It is a true resort environment. Um, dining 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and enjoying all the activities and love of the outdoor world. You know, and one of the things that I was really getting a sense for when we were there on location filming uh, at Riverview was that you and Joe were talking a lot about the fact that the levels of care that you're able to provide at Riverview go so far beyond uh, uh, like a, a simple situation that you guys can really work with a lot of and I think it has something to do with the licensing. Do you want to just expand a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, that's very true. We are ECC licensed, which means that we have the ability to act within a scope of a nursing practice, somewhat beyond what a standard assisted living would be allowed to do. Um, so as somebody has additional needs, we simply grow with them. And the intent for that license is to hopefully avoid um, any skilled stays throughout their lifetime um, unless it's for a rehab situation. So they can return home right. quicker, they can provide, um, and we can establish all of those therapy services at home. And in a lot of cases, somebody can go out for um, a procedure and return home without having to have rehab services. And I know too that you guys have been very uh, diligent about informing the community, not only just about Riverview, but just of, of programs and things that are of benefit to seniors. Like I know you guys recently partnered with uh, people who work with helping seniors, the Knowledge College for Aging. You guys have had a very successful uh, seminars of helping people get ahead, ahead of the aging curve and things like that there. That's really part of your mandate as a community, uh, community liaison, right? Absolutely. Education is a huge piece of this experience and, and as somebody is transitioning in life, um, there's a lot of needs that are involved and that's not just being provided meals and amenities and care. Um, sometimes that involves a home sale, sometimes that involves some financial planning, some long-term planning and how do you take care of your family and yourself as you age. So it's important to us to be able to educate our families as they're coming through on all those aspects and even if we are not the right lifestyle choice for them, uh, making sure they're pointed in the right direction to find that and, and so that they have a comfortable living situation ongoing. 
That's right. And you guys are actually soon going to be embarking on phase two, right? That's going to be a whole other aspect of what's going on down there. It's really quite impressive. But while we're talking about community, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about we're at this um, Mega Senior Expo, which is an amazing event. There, I don't know, someplace between 600 and 1,000 people will stop by today. We were talking about the importance of reaching seniors all throughout Brevard uh, County. It's one of the reasons why helping seniors itself makes a point to go to a lot of the senior shows because we live in such a large county. There's people all the way north in Mims and there's people all the way south in Sebastian. And it's a way to talk to people that are in different geographies of area. What do you think is useful about senior expos and the kind of things that we're doing here with Nina's organization, Central Florida Expos? These types of expos are invaluable. Um, not only are you bringing in and generating um, information for those who are aging themselves, but you're talking to their family members, their, um, their neighbors, their family and friends. Uh, and so you get a chance to share with them all the different resources that are out there and not just one, it's a completely unbiased environment. So as they uh, approach a booth, if there's something that they need, we simply point them a couple booths down. Um, so we, we all reach out as a community together to partner together and create um, solutions for all of these families. And that's exactly the goal of this. And not only that, but it, it reaches out to all of those crowds at one specific time. So they're not having to drop into all of these different environments individually to get that information. They can get it at all one stop. Well, and I was going to say, isn't that really a good way to start gathering information? Because half of it, as I understand, is trying to get to a point where you're getting information and an understanding of options before you find yourself in some sort of a situation where now maybe the situation is dictating your circumstances. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm sure everyone knows that when you're in a crisis situation, your options are narrowed. You're simply at the, the mercy of what's available and what's affordable and all of those choices. You're probably not even going to have the exposure to all the different options out there. So this is a way to plan for the future, understand what it is when the time comes, what you want to do, and be set in place for that to happen. Yeah, you know, with, one of the things with helping seniors, our, our goal, uh, Joe Steckler, who's our president and founder, you know, he's always had this mission from the get-go um, this goes back to, you know, he's a retired naval captain. Uh, he commanded a submarine, which is some really cool, just war story kind of things. It's just neat to hear those. But his last command in the Navy, as you know, was running the Navy's retirement home in Gulfport, Mississippi. And that's why he has such a passion. I, know, I saw when you guys were talking together, he, he really, because he speaks from sort of like an understanding of the of the aspects of it the same way you do and how it can be of a great benefit and improve the quality of life for seniors. But Joe has always had this mandate about you got to work on your aging plan now while you have options and get this understanding. So I think one of the things is valuable and one of the reasons helping seniors, we do the TV, Joe's been doing radio in this county for I think it's past 20 years now. Um, the, all the things we do with the, we call it the yellow pages in the center of senior scene, it's all designed to get information in front of seniors. And I think what we're doing together here at a trade show like this fits in that same category because you're trying to get people to be able to take information in, process it, and then make good decisions as it pertains to their own circumstances. Absolutely. This is one, one place of many that you can gather all that information together. Education is key. You certainly don't want to ever make an informed, uninformed decision. And this is the way to build that education so that you know what to do when the time comes. Yeah. And, you know, let's, to shift gears a little bit farther, with helping seniors, um, the, there's three things that helping seniors really focuses on doing. We have our own it's, we call it the helpline, but it's 321-473-7770, 321-473-7770. And people call us from all over the county, and they say, here's my issue. I'm trying to resolve something. And we get calls about housing. We get calls about transportation, medical, legal. I mean, it runs the gamut. And our team is very good because of their experience that a lot of times it's not that we are necessarily a resource but they will know the right person to call in that situation and that's part of the service that we offer to the community and today we've helped something like close to 2,000 different families with those situations. The second thing we do though is that media outreach trying to get people information because as, as I like to say in our community you either are a senior 
or you love or care for a senior, or God willing, one day you will be a senior. So it behooves all of us to get this information in ahead of time. The third thing that we do is we're serious about senior advocacy, and nobody is a more tireless senior advocate than Joe Steckler. In fact, we were just doing an interview with a gentleman who volunteers with AAP, and he's like, God bless Joe Steckler because of all the work that, that he has done, not only uh, for this organization, but in the past with Alzheimer's, things like that. What, is, what are the things that we can do together in this community to help our seniors? We live in a county where one out of two is 50 plus, one out of four is 65 plus. What are the things from a community service aspect that we can all do together as we try to help seniors? Well, there are certainly um, volunteer um, opportunities out there. You, you can certainly take your time and just simply spend a little bit of time with something like Meals on Wheels. Right. Um, you can come and help out at a trade show like this. Yes. There are volunteer opportunities within each of the communities that are out there as well as uh, several organizations. And what you do at, at Helping Seniors of Brevard is Im amazing because not only does somebody have the ability to come to an event like this, but oftentimes somebody might not have transportation to an event like this, so they need that helpline or they need right. the media outlet. They need um, different ways to be able to reach them. So the hope is that we're able to reach out to every senior and or loved one in the community and partner together to find the right solutions for every family. Yeah, you know, and it's, a, it's a funny instance because a lot of times, sometimes money is a problem because I don't have enough money to do the things I need to do. And we've connected people with resources on that direction. We were talking to a lady who said, I either buy food or I buy prescription. And literally, Kay, who works with our information line, says, well, you are aware of Meals on Wheels. And believe it or not, there was a person who didn't even know the program existed. The flip side is there are people who have a lot of resources but still don't have the right information. And that's why it's important that we get them this information as well. We have just like 30 seconds left. I wanted to kind of ha ask you to sort of sum up your experience and the things that you're enjoying about today's event here at uh, the Mega Senior Expo. This is not only an informative environment, but a fun environment. Yes. So it's a, a time and place to gather together as a community, reach out to each other and see what we can do to help each other, and just to lend a smile to everybody who walks by. So I, I encourage everybody to come and participate. That's great. Well, thank you again for taking the time. I know you guys are busy with, with people uh, milling and, and getting information about things, but thanks for taking time out of the day to join us on Helping Seniors. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.